the Samsung Galaxy A55 is one of the most beautiful devices I've ever held and uh, wait, where did it go? Ah. ah, there we go. One of the most beautiful devices I've held in my hands and you can see why. I mean this phone is gorgeous and it's super hyped right now so today we're gonna be taking a look at uh, its performance, gaming, cameras and everything that this phone has to offer and to decide if it's actually worth your money. So see you in two weeks. In the box you're not getting much really, which is a shame considering how many things some Chinese brands have stuffed inside of their boxes. All there is here is your phone, the USB cable and a pin ejector, so no charger, no case, nothing like that unfortunately. But when it comes to the design and build quality, you can probably appreciate that shiny back. I mean, it's stunning and Samsung calls it awesome lilac. I love how it reflects light, it's just something unique and eye-catching that gives the phone a very premium feel. And to my surprise, it also doesn't attract fingerprints which is very typical for devices of this price range. But another interesting thing about this phone is that on the back it has a Gorilla Glass and on the front it has a Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, which should give you great protection. Well, no, I don't really believe that. You know what? I just slapped on a case, a screen protector and even one of these camera bump uh, protectors. I don't know how they're, they're called really, but yeah, better safe than sorry, right? So the phone is also surrounded by a, an aluminum frame that feels nice to the touch, even though I heard too many people complain about that one. I think it definitely looks premium and I had no issues holding or using this phone at all, so I really don't understand them. And finally, the phone is IP67 dust and water resistant, so it will survive the drop in the toilet, no worries. But just don't swim with it, I tried that with my Galaxy S21 Ultra back in the day and it didn't turn out so well. Another complaint I have would be the fingerprint scanner and I have no idea why but this fingerprint scanner is extremely slow. Like if it connects and unlocks my phone it's just super slow and look at how much time do I have to spend just holding my finger there. It's just super annoying to be honest and I'll just use the face unlock or something like that because it's just too slow. Moving on to the display and here is where I'm a bit disappointed and not by the screen itself. It's actually great, but by the massive bezels around it. I mean, come on Samsung, it's 2024. You think just could have reduced that a lot more. I've seen a lot better and thinner bezels on similarly priced phones, but at least you have a gorgeous 6.6 uh, Super AMOLED display, sporting that 120Hz refresh rate with HDR10+, all the good shenanigans, and a maximum of 1000 nits brightness. Now that's not as bright as what Xiaomi, Poco or Realme or the other Chinese phones are gonna offer you but it's still plenty for outdoor use and I had zero issues, still not one of the brightest ones out there. That being said, Samsung is Samsung and they still make one of the best displays out there and this translates very well when you're viewing any sort of movie or just a YouTube video. The phone will produce some nice, punchy, vibrant colors and you'll definitely love how the screen looks. The resolution is Full HD which is not 1.5K like for example Xiaomi's, the Pocus and other Chinese brands out there but it still gets the job done. So what do you guys think? Is this screen a good screen? I mean, let me know down in the comments. Now this phone should support dual speakers even though they're not on the bottom and on the top, they're on the bottom and on the earpiece. So here is a quick sound test so you can decide whether you like it or not. Once that you put on the side, it gives a more premium feel to the phone. Speaking about this gorgeous AMOLED display, we have a 6.67 inch HDR10 plus 120Hz display and it's curved. So this is something that I really like, it again gives this phone a very premium feel despite it being just under $350. Now before we continue, I would like to quickly mention the sponsor of this video, Fast Comet. Now, Fast Comet is a hosting company that you can use to create your own websites from blogs to shops to literally any type of project that you might have and I know that because I'm using them myself. They offer an amazing 24-7 customer and technical support that you can rely on. They are cheaper than most bigger hosting companies out there like GoDaddy, SiteGround and Bluehost. So make sure to give them a try from the link in my description below and that way you can also support me as a creator. Now let's get back into the video. When it comes to the software, this year Samsung has loved the One UI 6.1 on top of Android 14. 
And as a previous Samsung user with the S21 Ultra, I actually really love this. It has some nice features and it's pretty clean looking in my opinion and butter is smooth most of the times. Now there are also plenty of nice themes to choose from and that goes for the always on display as well. My favorite one would be that uh, purple cat eyes kind of uh, style, I mean it just looks so cute. Now when it comes to the performance it's really not that great overall and I mean the raw performance actually the phone is pretty smooth uh, when you're using it for your day to day tasks but with this Antutu and Geekbench results you will quickly realize that the Exynos 1480 chipset that stuffs inside of this device is not really meant for heavy lifting and yes this phone is actually really optimized and it doesn't even get so hot usually so flicking between multiple apps using your social media, YouTube and whatnot would be great but when it comes to gaming things are not as pretty. I've tested some games here and I'd say the phone handles them okay but I definitely wouldn't pick this phone if I was playing on it for an extended amount of time or maybe some heavier games. The Exynos chipsets always sucked when it comes to gaming at least from my experience and here it's not any different. Don't get me wrong, most of the titles like PUBG, Asphalt, Call of Duty etc would run just fine, but something heavier like Genshin Impact uh, won't run so well, at least not on the highest settings and the phone will heat up to some extent and that is going to further reduce that frame rate. Still playable on the medium to low settings, so you can expect a nice 45 to 60 frames per second most of the times. When it comes to the battery life, Samsung has stuffed a nice 5000mAh battery inside of this device but forgot to give you enough power to charge it. The phone tops at 25 watts of charging and that's pretty slow, especially for someone coming from the uh, 120 watts charging of the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. Oh yeah, and you would also need to purchase that charger separately, but fortunately I had one lying around so lucky me. Now to the main attraction, the camera. So we have a triple camera system here, a 50 megapixel main, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 5 megapixel macro lens which already sounds better than what other Chinese brands are gonna give you with their 2 megapixel macro lenses. For those of you who know Samsung's camera UI, this wouldn't be much different from what you are used to. You have your typical modes here as well as a pro mode for photos and videos and here are some samples I've shot with this phone. Now I believe the camera is where Samsung always shines, you can get a great results with lots of details and not so much artificial sharpening. Now to my surprise not only the ultra wide but also the macro lens is doing pretty great here and I'm loving these results as much as I would love to if you poke that little like button down there or subscribe to my channel, it would mean the world to me. The low light performance is ok as well as the selfies which turn out to be pretty sharp mainly because of this 32 megapixel selfie shooter and when it comes to the night photos I was actually surprised by this phone because I didn't expect it to be that good. When you turn on the night mode you actually can see in the dark and these are some photos that can prove this to you. Nighttime selfies are not as great as the daytime ones but that's expected, after all this phone is just under $350 so I'm perfectly happy with the results and let's move on to the video quality. This is another strong point for Samsung because 90% of the times the result is a well stabilized and sharp video with lots of details and very very minimal jittering. The phone comes at 4K 30fps unfortunately but that is to be expected and as someone who really loves 4K 60 I would have loved to see it as an option but hey maybe next year who knows. I would really like to know your opinions on this video quality guys and as you might have noticed I used this phone to film the beginning of this video with some nice studio lights and actually fun fact about this channel, I'm only using smartphones to record all my videos, it just makes everything that bit more interesting. Nighttime videos are a bit of a mess as you would expect but to be honest the problem here is that I live in a quiet neighborhood with almost zero city lights and that definitely doesn't help the quality during the night, so you can take that with a grain of salt. Now this is the front facing video quality of the Galaxy A55 and man I'm happy, I'm finally happy that it's 4K 30fps, like all the other, almost all the other smartphone brands just cap it at 1080p at 30 or 60fps and it's so good to see that you have the 4K 30fps option here, it's much more crisp, it's, it's just an amazing quality, so yeah, definitely one of the strongest points of this device. 
So this is the front facing video quality during the night. Uh, I just am standing right next to one street light here and there is not much of light I know but this is where I live and unfortunately I didn't find a better place to film this video but from what I can see here the quality is kind of okay. I mean let me know what you guys think down in the comments but for me it's totally usable definitely one of the best in this price class all right so who is this device for well if you're looking for a gorgeous looking phone with a great camera system then look no further than the galaxy a55 it literally obliterates almost every other smartphone in this price category so i definitely definitely recommend it and if you want maybe some faster charging or more gaming performance out of a device then i would advise you to take a look at these two videos here that being said, thank you so much for watching this video and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.